Cool, yeah. So I'm Tim. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CTO of Postdoc. Um, title of this talk is Serving 5 Million Analytics Careers a Month, uh, which is about, right, I actually may have even undercooked it. It's three parts. I'm going to rattle through because I know you've been listening for a while. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to talk about what Postdoc is. Uh, I'm going to talk about how we scale to millions of careers a day. And then the third part, which I haven't told anyone on the ClickHouse team, so who knows, they might hate me. Uh, and we're going to launch something called Housewatch, which we launched today. It's a tool uh, that helps you manage um, your ClickHouse uh, stuff. Uh, it's open source. It's a project. So we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Um, right. So what is what is Postdoc? Um, it basically is a open source product OS. So it combines a bunch of tools together. So it combines your product analytics. So you can do things like funnel queries, um, you know, trends, graphs, uh, filtering, all that kind of stuff. Um, of your kind of product analytics data. So user signed up, user did a thing like page views, whatever it is. Um, we do session replay. So um, you can look at your users using your website um, and then combine that with the product analytics data, which is really useful. And then we add a bunch of you know network tab recording. We add console log recording, all that kind of stuff. Um, we do feature flags, so um, you can release features to your users um, based on whether they're in a certain cohort, whether they have certain properties. Um, on top of that, we built experimentation, so you can do A/B tests, you can roll things out to your users, um, you know, see what the whether there's a st statistically significant impact of those features. Um, and then we have sort of an event pipeline. So we export to a bunch of destinations, a bunch of data warehouses, a bunch of other stuff, um, you know, customer IO, uh, your CRM, whatever it is. Um, so that in a nutshell is what we do. Um, we're an open source, uh, we started as an open source project. We've got, you know, some more than 10,000 stars. Um, you know, really big developer community How about, I think that's kind of outdated, but um, certainly on our US cloud, over 50 billion events that we tracked. Um, here's some stats. Um, this is pulled from Housewatch. Uh, that's the spoiler. So um, actually, the number of queries per day that's like 1.5 million. Um, but I, for the title of this talk, I sort of took out some of the background processing and stuff. Um, and you know, there's a bunch of interesting stats here. We'll, we'll, we'll go into these. Um, this is sort of our click house. Again, this is just our US cloud instance. Um, but we're talking about, and this is just our events table. Um, but you know, here we're talking about sort of, it's unreadable, but uh, 62 terabytes of uncompressed data. That's just one, um, that's one column. Um, so 50 terabytes of uncompressed data, eight uh, terabytes of uncompressed data. So this is probably like a couple hundred terabytes of uncompressed data um, that we are sort of querying. So um, people send us events and we query them in real time. Um, now the re the kind of interesting thing is that it's not actually confidential. The uh, interesting thing is that when we switched to ClickHouse, we um, bought a couple of servers from Amazon. Um, so it is a like 64 vCPU, 500 gigabytes of memory. Um, you know, we have four of those and they've sort of scaled from two, three years ago, not that much usage to all the way to where we are now uh, on US cloud. So those boxes have scaled extraordinarily well. What we have done recently was we added um, a couple of really beefy servers um, just for kind of offline processing. So all exporting or um, kind of recalculation, stuff like that. But I think this just goes to show how well kind of click out scales that we haven't really had to scale. We've had to scale everything else up like a hundred times, uh, but click is still sort of the same size. That's really cool. Um, right. So I'm going to talk about, this is part two of the talk. I'm going to talk about some of the optimizations we've done to actually serve all of these queries. Um, this is just giving you an idea of like the scale of the problem. This is an event for us. So it's sort of, um, you know, you have your, the type of event, which is a page view in this case. You have kind of the user, um, you have a timestamp, and then you just have a bunch of unstructured data. For us, that's all in a JSON field. So we, we dump all that data into a single JSON field um, and then query it. So that worked reasonably well for quite a while. Um, so this is what a query like this um, would uh, look like. Um, this is a very sort of standard query. So, you know, we query the number of unique users on a page view. We do some um, uh, filtering on that by the current URL, for example. 
uh, and then um, we show you a graph. That's like a very basic query for us. This is sort of the uh, flame graph of that query. Um, and as you can see, we were spending most of our time here uh, reading from JSON. So um, basically reading the, the JSON field. Um, ClickHouse is actually surprisingly good at this. But uh, especially for some of the queries that are doing, you know, over like billions of events for some of our biggest customers, this is pretty slow. Uh, we actually did a whole talk on this in ClickHouse, uh, in a ClickHouse meetup in the in San Francisco, uh, if you want to look that up. But the very, very simple answer was just to add a materialized column to the events table. So we do this for kind of, um, we have a job that runs every weekend that looks at the most used, or I think every day, that looks at the most used uh, columns. Uh, and then materializes those. So we have, you know, a couple hundred columns like this. Um, anything that doesn't is, is materialized like this probably isn't used enough for it to be worth it to be materialized because it does add a bit of um, storage and a bit of compute and everything. But this is this is a really, really great trick. Um, the next thing that we did, which is a much bigger project, uh, again coming back to this query. Um, so we've optimized the current URL by materializing it. That's great. Um, now the next problem that we've run into, uh, and this has literally been a year project in the work, um, is aggregating by unique users. So the way our data is structured is like this. So you've got your event that has a distinct ID. Uh, that distinct ID is mapped to a person, but crucially the person ID can change. So what happens, for example, is you go to, uh, an e-commerce um, web shop or whatever, you're browsing around, you're an anonymous user, we sign you an anonymous ID with our SDK. Um, then when you make a purchase, you put in an email address, you create an account, and then suddenly you get a account, like an ID or something, right, that the system assigns for you. Um, now we then merge those two distinct IDs into the same user. Uh, this is really important for things like funnels, because you want to be able to say, okay, how many people have come in um, you know, from Google ads or whatever, uh, and convert it all the way from like all these page views into like buying something and then returning and buying something again. So this is a really quite a difficult problem. Obviously as you're using, as a lot of you are right with, with ClickHouse, it's not that good at mutable data. Um, so for the longest time, what we literally would do is just join this. So this is what that query would look like. You'd have your, um, uh, events table, um, and we just do a count of the unique person IDs, uh, and then, you know, um, sort of aggregate that by the day. So that's the, this is basically the simplified SQL of the query you saw earlier. Now to get the correct count of the unique users, we had to do this join here. So, um, we had to get all the distinct IDs and basically all the distinct ID person ID mappings, uh, and then join on that just to get the personality. Now again, ClickHouse, especially with some beefy servers, surprisingly good at handling stuff like this. Um, but, uh, you know, again, if you're doing kind of um, queries over billions of rows, this gets really slow, um, especially if you then start doing kind of complicated retention queries, complicated funnel queries, um, this gets really slow. So what we've, um, the pattern that we've come up with, this is, this is sort of the end state that you want, right? What you want really is the person ID on the event. But again, because it's mutable, because you can merge users after the fact, and you can merge, you know, we've seen mergers with hundreds of thousands of events, for example, um, this would be very expensive to actually do on the event every time a merge happens. And mergers happen, you know, we have thousands of mergers a minute sort of thing. So um, this would be very expensive um, on uh, ClickHouse if we did this like this. So the pattern that we've come up with, which I, th I think is quite interesting, is we've added a person overrides table. So instead of just muting the table every time a merge happens, um, we store in a separate table the old person ID, the new person ID, and then a version so we know what the latest is. And then we can do a query like this. So it's a little bit more complicated, but basically what it is is we will just ingest the person ID that we think is correct, which again, in 90, 6% of the cases is correct. Um, but then if a merge happens, again, if someone logs in um, or if someone, you know, turns from an anonymous user into a uh, logged in user, um, we will add a, a row to the person overrides table. We join that in. 
and we either use the overrides person ID or the person ID that was on the event already. So doing that, um, here's a customer testimonial of that change. Um, so uh, Y Combinator uh, has both invested in us, but also is actually a customer of us. Um, and their queries went from 18 seconds down to one second on average. Um, and P95 queries went from 60 seconds to four seconds. Again, they had lots of um, kind of slightly complicated queries, like funnel queries, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that is um, one of the bigger changes we've made. Um, the other thing we had to do for that, obviously, is kind of backfill all these persons and IDs onto that table, um, which is why we created Housewatch, which I'll come back to. Um, and then uh, the, the the sort of last thing we do in that step is we don't want that person overrides table to get too big um, because then, you know, over time the queries would still digrade, degrade. So um, uh, on kind of a job, we run this kind of auto table uh, statement where we um, just update the person IDs based on the override table uh, before. So that way we roll up every all the changes very quickly, uh, very nicely um, and keep everything really fast. So I thought that was an interesting pattern of, um, it took us like, we sat in a room in Paris for about 12 hours trying to come up with this solution to this problem. Um, but it works pretty well. Uh, the other thing that we've done is uh, sampling. So ClickHouse out of the box supports sampling. Um, the really interesting thing, uh, especially for those of you building kind of user facing applications like the other two speakers here as well, is that sometimes people just want a button to click to make things faster. Um, the um, you know, even sometimes our queries are just slow because the, the cluster is a bit overwhelmed or whatever, um, you know, we, and what would happen before is people would just slack us, email us saying like, hey, your queries are slow, please make them faster. And we would go, mm, there's not much we can do. I mean, we've got this really long project in the works to like, you know, materialize the person IDs and whatever. And I admit, you know, it will happen in like three months. Um, often users were very unhappy with that. However, giving them just a button that like gives them a trade off of accuracy to um, speed has actually been really helpful because now they can just click this and we actually, um, kind of degrade it. So if you have a slow query, it will initially tell you, okay, try 10% sampling. If that takes 10 seconds, this will show up um, where you can click on a 1% sample instead and then on and on and on. Um, and you can actually go down to 0.1%. Um, it's been really, uh, I think because of the shape of our data or whatever, like the accuracy is really, really high for us. The, one of the biggest problems we actually have is trying to convince people that the data is accurate. Like even when you show them the comparison, they're still like, well, it's off by like two. Um, and you go, well, that's only an error rate of like 0.0001% on your data. Um, you know, it's hard to convince people that sampling is the thing that they need. Um, so the the thing, next thing that we're considering doing is actually doing sampling by default um, and then letting them have more accurate results if they want it. Uh, to give like definitely our biggest users kind of a speed up. But this is a really interesting thing where ClickHouse sort of helped us um, give users something that they could click rather than having to bug us. Um, right, part three before um, we can all grab some food. Um, Housewatch, so we've literally launched this today. Um, I've alluded to a couple of things. We obviously run our own ClickHouse um, stuff, but um, um, and you know, there's a couple of like problems we had administering this, especially because we have so many queries. We have, you know, again, 5 million queries a month, probably underestimate. Um, so there's a lot of, we don't really know who's using, who's running what kind of queries. Um, you know, when there was an outage, we had uh, just a list of kind of queries and metabase that we'd run to kind of debug things. Um, instead, um, what we've built is a app that you can run using Docker and put in your ClickHouse credentials and you can get a bunch of really useful and interesting stats. So this is just kind of an overview page. You can get number of queries, um, data read, that sort of thing. Um, there is this view, which uh, is my personal favorite. Um, <clears throat> it shows you normalized queries and it's ordered by, it's a real shame you can't see this, uh, the percentage of IOPS that that query is doing. So um, for example, this top query is doing 1.5% of all of our IOPS across our entire thing. And it's not a query that's called a lot. You can see the uh, calls per minute. Um, and it's it's done 51 terabytes of IOPS 
in the last, I think uh, this is like last hour or something. So um, you can then go in. The really cool thing about it is it is um, normalized. So it takes out the parameters like uh, team ID, specific stuff, whatever, replaces them with dollar sign one, dollar sign two, et cetera. So you can kind of group similar queries, which for us is a big deal because you know we have kind of funnel queries, which is one set of problems. And we have retention queries, which is another set of problems. So being able to have this and go in and then you can click in and actually see, okay, here are the top 10 long running queries. So you can see, oh, this is, is this specific team that's running these queries or these specific parameters. Um, so this has been, especially during outages or uh, times of low performance, this view has been really, really useful. Um, we've got running queries and a big button just to kill the queries, which again, we've always had to sort of go like in an outage, oh, what was the command again to actually kill a query? Um, so it's been great. Um, some schema stats, I showed you some of these uh, before, but you can see your like largest tables. You can click into those tables and then see the largest fields. Um, again, kind of useful for sort of debugging. Disk usage, <laughs> we've come close a couple of times. Um, always good to keep an eye on. Uh, some log stuff. Uh, and then the last thing, which is kind of operations. So um, <clears throat> one thing that you know, ClickHouse, we, we sort of did for a while with, with um, ClickHouse was just, you know, run migrations um, by hand, which isn't great, um, especially when you have a lot of people relying on your data. So um, with operations in Housewatch, you can create uh, forwards and backwards migrations. It's kind of like Django migrations, if you're familiar with them. Um, so you create your forward migration, you run that. If it fails, it tries to run the backwards migration to kind of get rid of whatever migration you did. Uh, you can keep track of it, whatever. So uh, we've launched this today. Uh, it is uh, MIC licensed open source at github.com forward slash postdoc forward slash housewatch. Uh, there is a QR code as well. Um, yeah, we'd love your feedback, love your kind of input, thoughts, any features you'd like on this as well. Um, and that was my talk. Uh, thank you very much.